After two failed marriages, retired miner Clive now lives on his own. He meets women through internet dating sites. Most of my day is spent blogging on and off chatting. I got a nickname uh, that I use. My nickname is Lucky Lips 2005. Ah, I've just seen somebody I was talking to before. She phoned me last week and she disappeared. This one's very pretty. She's from Milton Keynes and uh, I was chatting with her last week. Now I'm going to try and get her to chat direct to me, one to one. Uh, she's actually a barmaid. I, I got her direct. How is she there? How is you? And I said, how are you? Oh, I'm not working today. Just chilling. I don't know. Uh, telling her, I'll pop down the wheel and then she'll see if I get with her now. Yeah, okay. she said, yeah, okay. Oh, this. I told her I got the kettle on. Yeah. I actually had this woman in Bolton one morning. She said she'd pop down and she did. She came down that day for Bolton. I'm getting all excited with this. Was, this one's very pretty. I thought I'd lost her for good. All of a sudden, she's back. And she said, yeah, okay, she'll wait. I've got to be very fast here to keep her in the conversation. And to me, this is like fishing now. Sounds good to me. You've got a big fish in the line. You're going to pull them in slowly. You see? And this one seemed to have got off my line and gone. And then she'd come back again, you see. So I've I got to play it, play it cool with her. I'd love to meet this one. Uh, I tend to feel with this one, because she's so pretty and so nice, I, I tend to feel as if uh, I, I, you know, go to know her and that, that, I, that I already like her, you know, and, uh, and I can't wait to meet her. These are some photos that I got from women that didn't have photos online, but prefer to send you photos. These are my private collection, my, my conquests, and uh, they're very pretty women, you know. I'm proud uh, that I've slept with such pretty women. This is a very pretty, attractive photo that I had of the California woman before she came over. And uh, I couldn't wait to meet her. And then she comes over, and I couldn't find her in the station. I was thinking, where is this pretty woman from California? And uh, there was a tap on my shoulder, and I turned around. And a little squeaky voice said, uh, looking up at me, are you Clive? And I looked at her and I thought, oh my God, is an old woman of 70? I couldn't believe how old she was. I had quite a few women turned up after sending pretty photos of themselves, younger photos. But the Californian one was the worst one yet because she looked so old and so different to her photos. But as it turned out, she was very nice and uh, I had a good time with her, I got to say. When not chatting online, Clive's time is governed by strict routine in preparation for his forthcoming day. Sunday is very important for keeping me looking out. This is what the women like as well. There's no doubt about it. They go for looks. They say they don't. It's so comical, women. They never tell you their true and deep feelings. They often say looks doesn't matter, but they do go for looks. If I wasn't swimming, I'd probably slow down physically and mentally. But swimming does give me that stamina as well as energy. Uh, a lot of women have told me this, but I've got amazing stamina for my age. And that, in fact, they've had younger men than me with less stamina. I always try to avoid swimming and dating at the same time, but sometimes they clash. And the thing that surprised me more than anything was I was amazed at the stamina I had, and I was still able to handle a date better than ever before. So I always make sure you know, that when I get a date, I go swimming first. So then I'm well and truly ready for wherever I meet. It's important that I have a lot of phones because wherever I am in the house, I make sure that I can pick up a phone straight away. You can bet your life if, if I'm in the bath, on the loo, the phone will go. Because some women, they don't like the phone.
straight away or they don't feel like phoning and then they get that mood at a certain time of day where they want a chat. So you've got to catch them at a certain time of day. If you miss that, then you could miss a date as well because they might not phone back again. I'm not sure whose knickers is who, but they're all washed. All smell nice. I smell them all ready for the women to come and pick them up. The only, the only pair I do remember is these, the Californian girl like these, because she wanted to come back, you see. And I didn't like to tell her at the time that I didn't want to see her again. So I remember saying, uh, oh, uh, by the way, she said, my, my gold nickel is, is in your bathroom. Can you wash them for me? So I know that she owns these. I'm not sure about the rest. Oh, I, I seem to have tapped into a hornet's nest. Swarms of women. Hundreds of women. You can go on dating sites and spend days and you still won't go through all the women. Uh, I mean, emailing all the women on these dating sites. You can go through pages and pages of pictures of women that seem to go on forever. Sai has discovered that the vast, fertile plains of the internet provide an almost endless choice of potential dates. The good thing about dating life was you could page them up ten at a time, you see, and go through them. It was so quick, it was so quick to email. I could email 50 women in dating life within half an hour. Such an abundance presents him with a problem. So many women, so little time. I could never get to the end of emailing them all, so there's so many there. Meg Clive on the Dating Direct. In fact, he sent several emails a day, and it would be quite overwhelming. But you soon realised that he actually had this sort of standard mail, and that there was more than one person he was actually sending it to. But it's interesting when it sends with coloured pictures and coloured background and different flowers on them and things. So, yeah, he, he attracted my attention, shall we say. He came across as very friendly, open chap. On the email and in the phone, you know, I'd talk about current affairs and children and animals and everything, really. And I thought, oh, you know, he seems quite a nice man. <coughs> I take them for the meal and they might have a glass or two away. Then after the meal, I show them the countryside. It's then we start holding hands, kissing and cuddling. And I always try and kiss and cuddle as much as I can and to see how far I will go. Because some, you know, will say, oh, come on, let's go back to your house. And we you're in bed within a uh, one half of me to them, you know. Sometimes Clive doesn't even have to wait that long. If we're the 38 year old from Fonzie wanted to make love on the way. We, we walk in, most of the golf course, you wanted to make love in the golf course, in the woods, and, 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 and practically everywhere. And I walk you now in those places and I think to myself, I made love, yeah, you know, this spot and places like that, you know. The bullets may hold happy memories, but Clive is already looking to the future. One of his email blizzards has netted a beautiful 40-year-old divorcee. The only potential problem is that she lives 322 miles away, in Scotland. The fact she's willing to travel all the way from Dumfries gives me that confidence that she's keen to see me as well as I am now to see her as well, you know. Dawn will be following a well-beaten path to Clive's door. Well, he's actually lady who's quite well off and um, comfortable and I think there's something that he likes to travel, but I didn't realise that was limited to the age of Wales. <laughs> he never comes out of Wales, so <laughs> bless him. And it's only being there, I suppose, that I realised that it was, he was more that expecting someone to come to him than he was actually willing to put any effort to go anywhere. 
So I arranged to go down on the train and he was going to meet me at the station. And uh, he said I could stay the weekend and not to worry because there was another bedroom and, and everything. And I thought, well, I'm a grown woman. <laughs> I can't get over the dishes and uh, I think if she gives me a kiss I'll probably melt in her arms, I think. It'd be a bonus if she stays with me and uh, not that I do much keeping if she does. Clive uses spam email to draw his dates from all across the country, despite his remote location. Others take a much more traditional approach. Nestling in the rolling hills of South Wales is a sleepy little village that's home to Clive Worth. He's only been outside Wales four times in his life. He spends the long summer days walking in the beautiful countryside and watching nature take its course. And all that nature has clearly inspired him. He reckons he's the world's biggest love rat, and he's proud of it. I became a love rat to safeguard myself from being hurt again. I'd been married to them and done everything for them, and I'd been so soft to them, and they'd all taken advantage of me. Lonely. Clive had had quite a hard and troubled life up until three years ago. I'd been drinking every day for ten years, and I finally stopped. And I honestly thought I was going to lead a boring life now. Until he got chatting to a friend who told him all about internet dating sites. All of a sudden I saw all these beautiful women on the internet. I couldn't believe there were so many beautiful women on there. So I started dating, one or two at first, and before I knew it, I had 30, 40 wanted to meet me. Same time, I just couldn't have enough women. Clive transformed his living room to accommodate his internet dating addiction. At any one time, he has five computers on the go. There are just as many women, none of whom know about each other. This is my den. This is where I spend most of my time sitting in my den. And I got the armchair here. It's like a cockpit of a plane. And I sit down and go on to one of 25 dating sites I got. Clive has a cunning way of enticing women, which he compares to fishing. He puts out his bait and lures them in. You've got to pretend you're not sure what to do and uh, let them think that you're the first woman they've had a date with in about two years. They don't realise that you just had a date a day or two before that. Clive reckons he's slept with over 1,000 women. Listen, I'm on stage, right? I'll get women drooling after me, and I ain't checked a thousand women. I need to go and see this guy. Me and him need to sit down and talk, but don't tell the wife. Most love rats have a secret key skill. For Clive, it's words. As the day goes on, you ask them if they want to see a film, and nine times out of ten, they want to sit down and watch a film, and they drink the wine. And then the crucial part is, in the night, you ask if they want a game of Scrabble. Now, most women like Scrabble. Yes, Clive has a seduction technique which we feel is probably unique. As you're playing Scrabble, you're, you're sitting by them and you're looking at their reaction. And you can sense that they're getting turned on, you see. You then know when to kiss or not. And nine times out of ten, when you kiss, it turns out to be a big kiss. The Scrabble is forgotten about. Okay, I'm going to take you now to where all the action happens. Upstairs to my bedroom. Monopoly, is it this time, Clive? Nestling in the rolling hills of South Wales is a sleepy little village that's home to Clive Worth. He's only been outside Wales four times in his life. He spends the long summer days walking in the beautiful countryside and watching nature take its course. And all that nature has clearly inspired him. He reckons he's the world's biggest love rat, and he's proud of it. I became a love rat to safeguard myself from being hurt again. 
I'd been married to them and done everything for them. And I'd been so soft to them, and they'd all taken advantage of me. Lonely. Clive had had quite a hard and troubled life up until three years ago. I'd been drinking every day for ten years, and I finally stopped. And I honestly thought I was going to lead a boring life now. Until he got chatting to a friend who told him all about internet dating sites. All of a sudden, I saw all these beautiful women on the internet. I couldn't believe there were so many beautiful women on there. So I started dating, one or two at first, and before I knew it, I had 30, 40, wanted to meet me. Same time. I just couldn't have enough women. Clive transformed his living room to accommodate his internet dating addiction. At any one time, he has five computers on the go. There are just as many women, none of whom know about each other. This is my den. This is where I spend most of my time sitting in my den. And I got the armchair here. It's like a cockpit of a plane. And I sit down and go on to one of 25 dating sites I got. Clive has a cunning way of enticing women, which he compares to fishing. He puts out his bait and lures them in. You've got to pretend you're not sure what to do and uh, let them think that you're the first woman they've had a date with in about two years. They don't realise that you've just had a date a day or two before that. Clive reckons he's slept with over 1,000 women. Listen, I'm on stage, right? I'll get women drooling after me, and I ain't checked a thousand women. I need to go and see this guy. Me and him need to sit down and talk, but don't tell the wife. Most love rats have a secret key skill. For Clive, it's words. As the day goes on, you ask them if they want to see a film, and nine times in the ten, they want to sit down and watch a film, and they drink the wine. And then the crucial part is, in the night, you ask if they want to give a scrabble. Now, most women like Scrabble. Yes, Clive has a seduction technique which we feel is probably unique. As you're playing Scrabble, you're, you're sitting by them and you're looking at their reaction. And you can sense that they're getting turned on, you see. You then know when to kiss or not. And nine times out of ten, when you kiss, it turns out to be a big kiss. The Scrabble is forgotten about. Okay, I'm going to take you now to where all the action happens, upstairs to my bedroom. Monopoly, is it this time, Clive? 